M. Lake Show. It's a day that the Pope is making his first official visit to the United States after what many, many analysts have described as a very successful uh, visit to Cuba. Um, America and Cuba have reached a kind of rapprochement and everyone says that the Pope played a very important role. Back home is a day after the hula baloo, as one of my friends said earlier today, it was an anticlimax because we were wondering if what happened today was what was going to happen. Why did we have all this controversy whether the Senate president was going to the tribunal or whether he was not going to the tribunal? Why did he have to go to the uh, Federal High Court? Blah, 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 blah. Well, today the Senate president was at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. He was accompanied by about 50 senators. Someone said, was that intimidation? No. The senator said they wanted to protect the Senate president so that nobody took him, was going to take him for a ride. Well, after everything, the Senate president pleaded not guilty to the 13 charge, uh, 13 count charge. Well, immediately uh, he left the tribunal uh, this afternoon. We went on the streets and wanted to know what Nigerians were saying. The law. Okay. It's the law of the land, so anyone found guilty will go for it. But then he has not been found guilty, it's just an uh, accusation. Yeah. So on the trial is on, we should be patient to allow the judiciary or the tribunal do their job. I believe that is a game of politics that is going on. But I think uh, this is not the right time for them to play such politics because they are still taking us behind. Should, I believe it should be his political enemy that they want to make sure they get him down from his position. No, I think it's good for democracy. That's all we, we wanted. Somebody, I mean, uh, go against the law and go score free the way they usually do before is out of it now. Today he's been docked there and we saw everything. The whole Nigeria saw what happened today. So that's a beautiful thing for democracy. I believe that what they are doing is of no use and they should allow the man to walk. And where they should intervene in the matter and allow this man to walk. All these people should leave this man to work. We'll call you Godfather, tell you the person that is the president, what we needed is who will work. Now for those that believe in the school of thought that the persecution or the prosecution is politically motivated, I don't want to believe like that. If actually there is no corruption, if a prima facie evidence of corruption has not been established against him at the CCB level, well, it's, I mean, the court is there to decide. And that's the more reason why we have the hierarchy of courts. If at the CCB level he believes that he has not been given a fair hearing, he has the right of appeal. Well, once you are into politics, yeah. you have a lot of enemies. There was something 12 years ago, children that come up. But because he has a lot of enemies around him, those that are really fighting him, those that don't want him to be there, definitely they will come out with an issue just to make sure they marry you. But if I will advise him, because now that he has been a dog, he's I've been put on the dog box. Uh, I will address him to your resent from senior president because he said credibility is at stake now. You've heard it all. Well, those were Nigerians expressing the opinion about uh, the docking of the Senate president at the Code of Conduct Tribunal earlier today. Well, the Nigerian army says um, the recent Shekau audio clip uh, talking about uh, the insurgency should be ignored. Ac actually, uh, the summary of what they said was that it's rubbish, uh, that it was the effort of a dying man or drowning man who would hold on anything, you know, just to make sense. Uh, the Nigerian army says, forget the man. Uh, Boko Haram is being decimated actually down the run. That's what the Nigerian army is saying. And then Olu Falai, of course, we remember him, the former secretary to the government of the Federation, uh, is still missing. He's still in the custody of his abductors. Immediately uh, after he was abducted, there was a ransom. They were asking for a ransom of 100 million. But today they have graciously come down 10 million lower. They are asking for 90 million. Dollars. I mean, 90 million naira, not dollars. Um, 
And then um, the federal government says, oh, Nigeria, we need to sacrifice. So the independence celebration this year is going to be low key. And they say they're going to spend just 70 million naira to celebrate uh, Nigeria's independence. Of course, you know that two days of public holidays uh, were declared and um, a lot of Nigerians will be celebrating the independence anniversary. Well, these are some of the things that are trending across the country. But look, sextortion is a new word in our lexicon. Sextortion, not extortion. Well, um, you can call it sexual harassment or call it any name. The point is that it is a growing uh, is a growing cancer, growing like wildfire, especially in our academic institutions. Let me tell you a story. There's a professor, he's called Professor Cyril Ndifong, Dean Faculty of Law at the University of Calabar. He is in the news for the very wrong reasons. Well, he's been accused of raping a 20-year-old 400-level undergraduate of law in Unical. Um, for obvious reasons, we'll call this young woman Miss X. Uh, the story is that Miss X was uh, going to have her exams. The, the professor comes in, tears her paper, asks her to come to the office, and the girl goes to the office, and one thing led to another. Professor Cyril Ndifong, before the girl left there, is being accused to have raped her twice, not just once, twice and then humiliated her, asking her to carry uh, his books and all that. Well, um, the professor, the respected professor, who we hear is the first law professor from Cross River State, has been suspended by the authorities of the University of Calabar. Actually, the vice chancellor set up a committee that's investigating it, and they've suspended him, in the, they suspended him like two weeks ago. We also hear he's been arrested and granted bail and the police in uh, in cross river state is saying we are still investigating when we are finished investigation investigating we sure will prosecute him well that is it unfortunately um, he has not been charged to court but dr akin barua who is a lecturer at the university of lagos is not as lucky as uh, the learned professor, Dr. Akin Barua, a lecturer in the accounting department of University of Lagos, has been charged to court and remanded in Kirikiri prison for allegedly raping an 18-year-old jambite. You know what they, who they call the jambites? The ones that just finished secondary school, they take jam, they are looking for admission. Well, this man, had carnal, forced carnal knowledge of this young lady. That's the accusation. And he has been remanded at the Krikri uh, prison. And the story is that uh, the father of this young girl was looking for admission for this, for this daughter, has this good friend, please help us get admission. And before you know it, the man took the girl to his office and raped the girl. But the man is claiming that, look, I had sex, but, oh, sorry. I had sex, but um, it, was, uh, it was agreed. It, she did it willingly and all that. And uh, they are saying that that's what they all say when they are caught or are led to have been raping or have raped anyone. The usual story is that, oh, it was an agreement. So today on our program, we are looking at this hydra-herded monster. This growing cancer in our society, where a lot of young women are sexually abused, sexually harassed, sexually extorted, especially in the academic institutions. Today we have lined up a number of experts to talk about this growing problem. We have Pauline O. Abu Limen, Esquire, arbitrator and notary public. Um, Pauline is seated, I'm sure you can see her. 
is actually an all-woman uh, uh, panel that I have today. We also have Funke Barua. No relation of that man who is being accused of rape in the University of Lagos. Uh, Funke Barua is gender advocate, Nigerian Women's Trust Fund. Uh, I also have Geraldine Ezakile, a feminist, Nigerian Feminist Forum. And of course, Dorati Njemanze, actress and humanitarian. Um, they are pretty women, but they are not <laughs> talking pretty tonight. They are very, very upset. And they are going to talk about how we can nip this hydra-headed monster in the bud. But before they join me, we have a short report on sextortion. That's the new word on our list. Sextortion is a form of corruption in which sex rather than money is the currency of the bribe. In some Western countries, incidents of sextortion have been prosecuted under various criminal status, including as extortion, bribery, corruption, sexual exploitation, among others. While in Nigeria today, the justice system is yet to find an appropriate penalty for the persons guilty of sextortion. Money may not have passed hands, but you've taken away something from the girl. You know, so I think it's also corruption. There are enough laws to prosecute such acts, but there is no specific law that criminalizes sextortion. Sexual extortion is fast gaining ground within the Nigerian society, killing many men and women, while the victim keeps sealed lips as they suffer in silence. Could this be as a result of our justice system? or the cultural stigmatization. We must look at the scenario. Because when you make such reports, you expose this, vi this victim, become exposed to pressure from outside and from inside. Honestly, I tell you, it's really only a very strong-willed person. Person that can, you know, look at uh, situations and say, no, I would rather suffer than find myself in that uh, situation. And then you know that there's no legislation towards that uh, angle because if, it's, if you talk about rape, then yes, we can say there's legislation governing rape now. What is the way forward? And how can this growing epidemic be arrested? There should be laws to explicitly criminalize that. Then secondly, women should be able, should be, should be allowed to express themselves using platform of civil society organizations so that of course we know that a lot of people are under those, those kind of pressure from their main folks. According to SPAR, the war against sextortion and other form of sexual abuse could be fought by everyone as it is the desire of many that this cancer be nipped in the bud before it ruins many lives and destroy our society. Chi Amaka Akuche, O&M Lisho. Watching Nigeria's biggest late night show. I think the government is doing its, its best. Buhari himself is an issue. Just yes, as the I'm Buhari, just, just as the Buhari organization has made good luck, Jonathan, an issue. We have laws, we have institutions set up to fight corruption. Advocacy for the chief of health is born out of what they symbolize. The average Nigerian want to know what do you have for him? Panika you with what was with us for a while. What happened? I think he came on a journey and discovered that uh, we are too transparent for him. A banking license was cancelled in one day, and a life license was cancelled in one day. When I was retrenched, it became worse. And at some times, to even find food to give to the children was hell. Don't tell us we want a, a, a nation that will be the most powerful black nation on the earth. We all want it. How are we going to get it? O&M Late Show and O&M Sunday Show with Obira Ilo and Mamudia Kuga. Tuesdays, Fridays, 11 p.m. and on Sunday, 2 p.m. Are you watching Nigeria's
Welcome again, and this is your late night catch up, the O and M late show. Tonight we are talking about sextortion, rape, sexual harassment, name it. And we have quite a team. And starting off our conversation tonight, I have Geraldine Ezakile, a feminist uh, of the Nigerian Feminist Forum. And I have Dorothy Njemanze, actress and humanitarian. Um, ladies, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> hey, very Dorothy, good you're welcome. Please Thank sit down. You. And on the phone, all the way from Calabar in Cross River State, I have the mother of the young girl that was raped by um, who is by the by the young girl that was raped and. Uh, the professor is being accused of having raped this young girl. And like I said, we won't mention her name. Uh, we won't mention her name today for obvious reasons because we need to protect her identity because of stigmatization and all that. Um, he, uh, professor Cyril Ndifondin, Faculty of Law Unical, is being accused of having raped this young woman the mother is on the line madam you're welcome to the o and m late show thank you sir and also from calabar in cross river state i have um, someone else a father who also has a child in that same faculty and he's also accusing the professor of also having sexually abused the daughter. Barrister, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, let me start with the mother of this 20-year-old girl who was raped. Uh, Madam, you know, we would have, we, we had indicated interest in talking to your daughter, but I hear she's not able to talk to us. Can you describe for us how she is feeling right now? Uh, thank you so much, sir. As you know, this is just a baby that just turned 20. She's highly traumatized by this almost 70-year-old man's action. The man in question is not new. This is a stalking threat. We have done it over the years. He has traumatized frustrated so many young innocent girls out of school. Some of them have dropped out. And uh, I wonder why God did not discipline him, quarantine him, before he got to this young promising girl. Okay, madam, did your daughter ever complain to you that she was being sexually harassed before this happened? No, she. Uh, uh, it was on the 29th of August. I can now recall that on the 31st of May, I attended a burial somewhere, and I was with my daughter. My husband was inside the house. And I saw one short man that looked at my daughter, looked up and down, up and down. Because of that, I now whispered to my daughter, I said, who is this man that is looking at you like that? She told me that that is the dean of the faculty. Hmm. And I walked up to him, I greeted him. 
He now asked me, are you this girl's mother? I said, yes. I said, sir, is there anything wrong? He said, she's a naughty girl. And I didn't know that his naughtiness was that he was eyeing my daughter right from that moment. Okay. Um, um, you know, we've read in the papers that your daughter is traumatized. Uh, we don't know whether she st will still be able to continue uh, school, especially uh, your husband, when, she spoke to, when he spoke to us earlier today, did say that they were already circulating her name in the internet and that was uh, stigmatizing her and she's withdrawn. Uh, are you, how are you talking to her? How are you working on her to, you know, pick up the pieces of her life and continue? Well, it is traumatizing, but I know that Ndifon, serial Ndifon, is running from pillar to post. And I wonder why people are supporting him in evil. But my prayer is that anybody that supports serial Ndifon may rep never depart from his home. For instance, uh, there's a lecturer in the department, one Michael or two. I learned he's his own apprentice, and then one innocent, I would prefer to call him guilty over. Okay. This is somebody that had confided in somebody that he cannot be comfortable leaving his own wife with Ndifon for five minutes, and yet he's supporting evil. Okay, okay, madam. Michael okay. too went okay. to the class madam, on a particular day Ma and looked for my daughter. Madam, we don't, we don't, we don't have all the time. to my daughter because I know that she can make it. Would you just the God that destined her to be there will make her to come out safe and sound. Okay. Okay, just let me let me let me let me talk to Barrister Ikod uh the father of another victim, uh we understand in that same department. Barrister, uh good evening. Good evening to you. Barrister, would you describe to us what your daughter told you after her experience? Well, she never, she was not actually raped by this form, but made an attempt to come to a child called me one day and told me of experience, how the, the so-called lecturer set her up and uh, made her to go to her office when he could like, give her a proper dressing. And as she got there, the man started uh, making those advances even got to the point of forcing her to drink an alcoholic drink in his office and started hawking her. So just as he was attempting, somebody came in and the, boy, the child was able to run out of the office. Uh, when, 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 when she came with this uh, story, what did you do? Well, when she told me, it was not long before this other girl fell in the team. So that is exactly why I became very interested in this matter. Just as we were thinking of what to do, you know, he would deny He's a lawyer. He will try to see how he can recall himself out of this mess that he has. If he, if you, even when this matter came on the internet, it was uploaded in the internet, he said a lot of girls, though they came and I would, uh, did not mention their names, mentioned how they felt victim to him in that same manner. And I don't know why the university authority should take part in allow such a person to continue to harass very little children in that manner. Okay, okay. Uh uh, barrister and uh, madam, uh, madam, you know I can't actually give your name because of the circumstances of this uh, of this incident. Um, are you still there, madam? Yes, I'm there. I'm hearing you. Okay, I would just say thank you for sparing time. We wish you had more time. But what would be your message to um, Nigerians, to the authorities of Unical, and to young girls? Uh, on a night like this? Well, my own, I, I need, I demand justice. My daughter had been used as a sacrificial lamb. And Ndifon must be quarantined. Ndifon and his apprentices must be quarantined. So that the young girls, the promising young girls, their lives, they can go on and achieve what God has destined them to be. Ndifon has gone ahead to scandalize my daughter within him. Ndifon knows that he is guilty. 
And if I don't get justice, by whatever means, I will get justice. This, this God that I serve, the God was there, I was not there. And Biffon knows that he is telling a lie because he is a liar. But he has touched God, the apple of God's own eye, and he can never go free. His okay. generation gets okay. unborn. Okay. Biffon will never, ever. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Um, well, we've made every effort to speak to the learned professor. We have not succeeded. We'll keep trying. Um, later on in the program, we'll also be going to Lagos, where we'll get details of that um, rape accusation uh, that is being uh, put on Dr. Barua, Aking Barua, at the University of Lagos. Uh, ladies, um, you heard uh, what the, the victim's mother said. Mm. But before we pigeonhole this, this particular incident, why are we suddenly having a rise in this kind of behavior, especially in the academic institutions? Geraldine, let me start with you. Okay, um, thank you very much for having us here, for doing this. Um, it's, it's quite overwhelming. I need to... Um, correct something here that sexual assault has always existed in the universities. Um, it has always existed even outside the universities in other sectors. Is there um, in the banking sectors? Is there is there is 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 all it co it costs across almost every um, sector. But why do we now have these cases. Uh, why? Why is that? Why we're having the rise in the cases of sexual um, harassment now? It's um, a lot of factors. First, uh, there's the growing movement of activism. Um, a lot of people are now speaking out. Um, people are breaking the silence because um, sexual harassment or matters of of, of this nature are things that. Are we really do not discuss outside uh, of the home. Um, I think because of our particular uh, cultural, societal values, which does not give room for this kind of open discussion. And uh, the growing, um, the fact that people can now come out and have access to justice is also a big factor why more people are coming up. Uh, for instance, uh, we've successfully adjudicated cases of rape in the past, and this gives people who also have had the same experience in the past uh, the support to come up and speak up. Uh, sexual harassment in the universities particularly has been ingrained in the system. Um, as a young girl while I was in the university, uh, even though it didn't happen to me personally, but I could identify with a lot of stories that I've heard of uh, lecturers. I had a classmate of mine, um, I, an, a straight A student, who was um, preyed on by a lecturer from another department. And it took the intervention of lecturers from my department, female lecturers and them, because I, I was lucky we had this close knitted department. So um, the lecturers from my department intervened before um, she could be let off. So stories of sexual extortion within the university has always been there. Um, but what is critically lacking at this stage is the need to address such um, issues. Um, like in the past, up to now, most universities do not have a comprehensive sexual assault, um, policy, sexual harassment policy. It's not even discussed, it's not even an issue. Uh, we notice that in the student handbooks, most, uh, there's hardly any mention of sexual assault. Okay, Geraldine, let me go to, let me go to um, Dorothy. Yeah, Dorothy. Uh, Dorothy, um, I was reading somewhere, and I, they said that if 100 people are assaulted, maybe about 10 or 20 will talk about it. And 
that they say is a big problem in this fight. Why are people <coughs> reluctant mm. to, talk, to about talk about this kind of abuse? Well, because in times past, people have not been encouraged to speak about it. I recall very much dur uh, during the Absu rape time, we engaged the Minister of Women Affairs then, and um, a lot of you know, things came up and they said, okay, schools are going to be more sensitive towards these things. How many universities can boast of rape kits? Have they even heard of rape kits before? If, a, if an issue of rape comes up, how do you, it's, it's, it's more of my word against your word. So whatever this, the, the victim can do to prove her innocence, that's, that's the strength of the person's story. Do you understand? So on that level, the institutions have failed the students. We have, inst we have promoted uh, systems that encourage uh, violations instead of uh, promoting systems that uh, encourage justice. Or promote and when when these things happen, I remember then I, I went to I went to Imo State University, mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, when uh, Governor Achike Odenwa was uh, the governor, there was a report that was made to the there was a report that was made to him of a lecturer who was hounding a student, and everybody says ah he's in the law department now, nothing can happen to him. It has been happening over the years. My my very close friend was was you know one of the people who was hounded but until we start looking at things until we start making arrangements to support uh, victims of uh, such violations victim support there's no victim support and there's no uh, protection for victims so when people talk before you know it there's the stigma and everything and i'd say to the young lady in uh, in, in in calabar that feels very bad about stigmatization please do not feel bad about the stigmatization you're not the first person to go down the rape line i have been there and the more you talk about it the, the better you feel so first look it head on and tell everybody yes that's the worst thing that can happen to me being there and justice must happen so don't feel bad about speaking up seriously speak up the more people speak up the better for us if more i mean the, what has happened over time has been that our systems have promoted silence. But the more we speak about things, the more we know about the gravity of crimes available, and the more we know about the identities of the perpetrators of these crimes. And then in the uh, educational institutions, it's worse off because you teach people to learn you know, by keeping quiet, you, you teach people to start, start off life, you know, keeping quiet and being okay with abuse. They get into the larger society being okay with abuse and they teach their children to be okay with abuse. Okay. It's not okay to uh, be okay with abuse. We have um, um, an intervention from Loretta Aniagolo in Enugu, uh, Enugu State. She says, it has been going on, oh, yes. that's talking about sexual abuse. The only reason why it seems like it's rising is because more girls and families are, speaking are now speaking up. That's sure. Loretta Aniagolo from uh, Enugu in Enugu State. Let me come back to you, Geraldine. We don't have too much time, so let me just... Uh, how do we educate the institutions and how do we educate the young ones, the students, to know the red flags. Because when I read about the rape, uh, the alleged rape by uh, Professor Ndefon, or mm -hmm. yeah, Nde Ndefon, uh, Professor Cyril Ndefon, and the, the one by um, uh, Dr. Barua at Unilag, one thing the two girls said was, I walked into the office, they are pacing around, very restless, very uncomfortable. So how can we teach the young girls about those red flags? something you notice and you start running as much as you can? Um, to address this problem from the root, the university's governing bodies, um, the AS academic um, ASU yeah. and the school authority, first of all, must have, how many universities have um, sexual harassment policy? ingrained in the student handbook. There must be mass sensitization, the, uh, especially among the academic staff uh, union of university. ASU as a body must be able to have um, a comprehensive sexual harassment um, policy that must be implemented. And there's a need for critical mass enlightenment of 
its members and the greater university population. Okay. Um, one last word from you. Uh, well, pretty much. I heard you say, I've been there. Yes. So, uh, the first time, at, le at least I remember slapping one, uh, one of my lecturers for, it was not pacing around. It was, we needed to come into the office and get something signed. And it was, okay, what did you write here? And when I came close, they grabbed my breast and I gave him a resounding slap and I don't regret it. Please feel free. Get that expressive with yourselves. Defend yourselves, shout, and the rest of them, and get as much evidence. If the person is in the habit of doing it, at a point, students started taking videos and setting up people, and it was as if it became too much of a culture. But time has come. I mean, we need the institutions to support the students, and we need the students to speak up. And when they speak up, victim protection is important, and victim support is important, very important. Okay, we'll take a break, and uh, when we return, we have a lawyer talk about the legal implications, and we have uh, someone from the gender, a gender advocate of the Nigerian Women's Trust Fund, also joining us to talk about this cancerous uh, behavior that we are seeing in our society today. I will also be going to Lagos and we're talking to a woman who is also an activist who actually pushed that matter in Lagos, which has seen a lecturer docked, remanded in prison custody, and he's now shouting and crying like a baby. Um, when we return, don't go away. Nigeria's biggest late night show. I think the government is doing its, its best. Buhari himself is an issue. Just, as the, Buhari, <laughs> just as the Buhari organization has made good luck, Jonathan, an issue. We have laws, we have institutions set up to fight corruption. Advocacy for the chief of health is born out of what they symbolize. The average Nigerian want to know, what do you have for him? Panika you with what was with us for a while. What happened? I think he came on a journey and discovered that uh, we are too transparent for him. A banking license was cancelled in one day, and a life license was cancelled in one day. When I was retrenched, it became worse. And uh, sometimes, to even find food to give to the children was hell. Don't tell us we want a, a, a nation that will be the most powerful black nation on the earth. We all want it. How are we going to get it? O and M Late Show and O and M Sunday Show with Obira Ilo and Mamudia Koga. Tuesdays, Fridays, 11 p.m. and on Sunday, 2 p.m. You're still watching the O and M Late Show. Today we are not talking politics as we usually do. We are talking rape, sectorship, sexual harassment. Call it any name. And I am being joined now by another set of activists. Um, I have Pauline O. Abuliman Esquire. She's an arbitrator and notary public. Funke, I also have um, Funke Barua, Gender Advocate Nigerian Women's Trust Fund. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good evening. You're welcome. Um, but before I speak with you, let me quickly go to Lagos. Hello, Esther. Hello, Esther. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Uh, that's Esther Ogu, child rights activist. Esther, uh, please, can you bring us to speed with developments 
in that case involving a lecturer at UNILAC who is being accused for of raping an 18 year old girl <laughs> Esther are you with yeah, us yeah we are still on the matter as in the thought yesterday yes and the the lecturer is still in my thinking as I said today. There's a progress concerning the case. And we are we are leave that there will be justice soon. Okay, Esther. Okay. Yes. Esther, tell us about this little girl. Uh who the father said uh has refused to go for UMTE exams anywhere in Nigeria because she says she didn't know if she went to in another place uh, she will be molested. Tell us about her. How is she getting on? Yes, yeah, she she's getting she's fine. She's getting she's getting better. She's okay. She's getting better. She, yeah. It's because of fear, fear of what happened to her that she cannot go to the university now. Because any time any time maybe talk to her, she keeps on telling that she's scared and all that. Esther, talk talk to me, I'm listening. If you can bring down the volume of your radio of, of your TV, that's what's distracting you. Yes, we are. We are. She's doing. She's doing well. She's getting better. But not based on what happened to her, she's still very, very scared. She's trying to come out from the shock because it, it has not happened to her before. That was her first time. Based on the force and all that, so it's okay. She's trying to overcome the whole situation. Okay. But in Lagos, we are we are making progress. We are concerning the case. Press is following it up. Human oh. rights is following it up. OPD is following it up. OPD is uh, the public defender. Okay. Okay, sir. So you just yeah. hold on. I'm coming back to you, but I do have. Um, uh, some ladies in the studio. Pauline, you're a lawyer. Yes, thank you. Is our judiciary or our judicial system encouraging this uh, sexual brigandage? Thank you very much. Before I proceed, I must first and foremost commend and salute the courage of the parents of the Unica victim. Because most times, these things happen and nobody talks about them. Silence has always been an impediment to attaining justice. Sextortion has always been there. It's everywhere. My, my the other panelists, we are listening to the university. It is everywhere. And there are laws. The laws are already there. We have the criminal code, the penal code, even the new uh, violence against uh, persons prohibition that has just been passed. They are all there. What we need now is the enforcement of those laws that are already there. For the first time in history, the identity of the perpetrator was uh, revealed. Now that it is revealed, I am very sure that the full arms of the law will get hold of him and land him in the appropriate place. I'm happy that we have a new um, dispensation of policy now under the uh, purposeful and dynamic procedural police, Mr. Solomon Arasi. And I'm very sure that when he hears about this, he's going to ensure that justice is done in the case. It's not going to be swept under the carpet as usual. And again, the laws are already there, but there should be enabling laws to protect the victims. Like the victim um, in uh, Port Harcourt, she's been traumatized psychologically emotionally and otherwise. I'm not sure she's been taken to a trauma center uh, center for maybe uh, uh, um, psychological evaluation. It is very, very important. The law, like for example, the under the criminal code, that's uh, section um, 
section um, 382, it provides for the offense of rape and the appropriate punishment in the other section. So. Okay, let's, 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 uh, let's weigh in with Funke uh, Barua. Funke, um, you know, our lecturers are like our priests, mm -hmm. are like our parents. You know, how can, you know, how can we rationalize if that kind of betrayal of trust? How do we, how should society manage this kind of betrayer because the young ones are really getting the worst end of it. Thank you, Obira. I want to join others to say well done for bringing uh, this kind of issue to the front. Uh, like Geraldine said uh, before she left, it's not new, it's been happening. But social media has changed the face of communication worldwide. And because of social media, we get to hear of things like this rape has been there. I mean, it's just power relations. Um, one party has power, whether economic power or physical strength, over the other, or you know, an advantage over the other, and exploit that over the victim. So it has always happened. It's always been there. Only that now we get to hear about it more because there's social media, because uh, you know people uh, messages and news travel faster. Uh, for society, what can we do? I think one of the things we can do is what she has also mentioned: break the silence. Uh, before now. Uh, the, 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 uh, the silence, the, the stereotypes, the culture of shame, and the stigma that accompanies the victim, you know, clouds, you know, the issue of rape. And because of that, it doesn't get out in the open. You find the perpetrators hidden while the victim, the face of the victim, or is covered or left open. Nobody wants to be associated with anything that has to do with stigma. But one of the things we can do to deal with this is for people to take courage and stand up for what is wrong. And I want to commend the parents of these young women who have gone against social norms, which says keep it as a family issue and don't talk about it. Uh, nobody will want to marry your daughter or have anything to do with you because your child has been raped. We make it look like it is the fault of the person who has been raped. And you find out that over years and decades, only the victims suffer. I the think perpetrators don't. The perpetrators yeah. don't. Even as we speak, there is a lot of sympathy for the man. I was speaking to, I was just testing opinions, you know, before this show. And you'll be amazed, the comments that came even from young women who say, how was she dressed? So the first thing people Someone. ask, how was she dressed? And I've handled rape cases of 18-month-old babies. And I ask people, did they have their, they their <laughs> private part or their <laughs> breast or any part of their body popping out? So it has nothing to do with the presentation of a woman. It's okay. just power relations and people thinking they have power and advantage over other okay. people. Okay, well, I'll take the advantage of being a man here tonight, mm. you know, mm. because you women, forgive me, you know, when we talk about gender, it's about women. Yes. Don't men get raped? It's don't actually men, not about women. Don't, don't mm. men get sexually harassed? Don't men get this sex sex sextortion? Sextortion. That's why sextortion is so male and female. Yeah, but we've been talking about men. women, women. How 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 does it how does it uh, flow with men? If I'm becoming generally speaking, when you talk about sextortion, it doesn't have a gender barrier. Mm. Even me, because if the oldest one in the history of mice, even the Bible, I, I record Genesis thirty nine, seven to eight. Mm. Potiphar and Joseph. Mm. That was instruction. It's been there. But what we're talking, wife. what we are talking about now, is that there is more awareness. We are supposed to create more enlightenment, educate the public that they should break the silence, end it. And I'm aware of other organisations that they are, in, they are in the front um, uh, banner of this um, fight against instruction. For example, let the public know that the organisation that handles pro bono cases. The organization can run to, like the legal aid is there, National Association of uh, Female Judges, and um, they've been carrying on this fight for over 10, uh, 10 years. In fact, they have even done it in different languages all over the Federation. Then we have the FIDA, they are there. The Nigerian Bar Association, we have the pro bono um, uh, section. So let the public know that they can be protected. Okay, let me quickly run to Lagos and. Um, Esther, you are still with us. Um, 
Well, uh, the connection in Lagos is not too good. So, uh, uh, Funke, how do we get out of this problem? You've talked about education. Um, and I was going to ask, but you were already talking about it. Let me still ask, because you are ladies, you know. What, what causes rape? What? Is it like you said, some people said, the way people dress? Or is it a psychological thing? Is it a, an illness? I wish a doctor was here. <laughs> Kupira, what makes people, what, what makes people still, you know, greed, uh, people say covetousness, you know, if we use the religious parlance. But society itself, in, in every human being, there is an innate desire to go against the law. Everybody. And that is why we have rules. But if, you, if, if there's rule of law and, and, and you know, people, get, people pay for their crimes, people do the time when they, when they, when, when they commit a crime, you know, then there will be less motivation for people to do anything wrong. But when you have a society that does not punish a crime, I mean, in the marketplace, when you steal, even chicken or something like that, before you know it, people rush, they gather, they lynch the person. But when it comes to rape, you have, we, ha we are yet to see that kind of, I'm not advocating that that should happen, but I'm just saying the way society frowns at stealing. When society begins to frown at, at rape. extortion, rape and all its forms, then you begin to find that it will recede. But in every human being, unless there is rule of law, everyone is prone to breaking the law. Okay. Why we don't break the law is because we know we will serve jail term and we'll go to prison or something if we do break the you law. You know, I was reading the internet about an old woman, 81 years. That was real. The daughter, 18-year-old daughter, had been raped by two guys. And she went looking for them and shot the hell out of them. <laughs> and he shot them at very, very sensitive places. <laughs> you know? I think our <laughs> policing structures need to be able to help women, uh, men. Who, who are victims of rape or sextortion in whatever form. There has to be a sexual harassment policy in universities. We are advocating that something like that should be done, and even in workplaces. Okay, um, so and, uh, how do we strengthen our laws? There should be enabling laws. We should take clue from other jurisdictions. For example, like in the US, uh, sometime in 20, um, 2010, an 18 years old American was jailed. What was his offense? He was parading on the Facebook as a girl and uh, tricking his classmates to send nude pictures to him as a girl and he will use the photo for sexual for homosexual um acts. Acts. So there must be in yes he was sentenced to 15 years imprisonment so we must learn from other we clients. must learn from there because there must be rule of law then again there, then again there was an uh, immigration officer who as a colombian woman for sex in essence for green card and it was sent to four years imprisonment mm -hmm. okay. so if it may i invite, may I invite there. um because that's a little gift we have to give uh, maybe there's, maybe a VAP, there's a vac bill that she <laughs> yes. mentioned maybe, the most there's a VAP maybe there'll be a second a second i wish uh, you had more time okay. to really do with this <laughs> please thank you very a little much. a little gift for you thank you a little gift for you thank you so much thank Obira. You. Thank um, you. And Jerubin and I Dorothy, was a guest on the and just so. for you that you thank were a guest you. on the O and M Let Show. Well, thank uh, you. We, we thank God that <laughs> you are you're, you're pursuing this on O and M Let Show. We continue to support you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you have comments, please do send them to us. But don't forget that we are on with you again on Friday night at 11 p.m. I'm Obiorailo from Abuja, Nigeria. Good night. <laughs>